Hello, I'm Tom Nahumi from Dell EMC. In this demonstration video, I will be showing the new Dell EMC Parstor CSI 1.1 installation on Red Hat OpenShift using the new operator framework and cover the new features we've just released in this version. The highlights of this release include qualification for OpenShift 4.4 and Kubernetes 117, 18, and 19, including volume expansion, volume snapshots, and support for raw block devices. With that, let's start. In the previous demo, I showed how to install the new Dell EMC operator via the OpenShift operator hub. At this stage, now that the Dell EMC operator is installed, we are ready to deploy the new Parastore CSI driver. From the OpenShift console, we click on Installed Operators and then on the Dell CSI operator. Here, we can see a list of all available CSI drivers we can deploy using this operator. We go to the Parastore box and click on New Instance. Here, we need to specify the relevant details about our environment before installing the driver. Under the Parastore endpoint, we enter the address of our Parastore cluster REST API. Under the node prefix, we enter the prefix of our initiators at the storage level. Under the transport protocol, we can set the parameter to iSCSI or FC based on our configuration. Next, we can see the default storage classes and change them if needed. Now, we click Install to create a driver. Within a few seconds, our driver is up and running. We can see that the new storage classes have been created. Also, as part of the CSI driver installation, the OpenShift workers are created in Parstore as new hosts. Now, we are ready to discover the new features. Now, I'm going to create a new persistent volume claim from this Parstore storage class. As you can see, the operation completed successfully within a few seconds. By navigating to the Parstore UI and clicking on the Storage tab, we can see that a new 32 gig volume has been created, but it's still not mapped to the worker nodes. So now, let's create a new pod with a claim for this volume and see what happens. As you can see, as soon as the pod is created, the CSI driver maps the volume to the specific worker node this pod is provisioned on. The first feature I would like to show you is volume expansion. Starting from version 1.1, the CSI Parstore driver supports expansion of persistent volume. This expansion is done online, that is, when PVC is attached to a node and a pod. In order to use this feature, the storage class used to create the PVC needs to have the attribute allow volume expansion set to true as I showed you during the CSI installation. The PVC I created in the previous example is bound to the pod. In order to expand the volume, all we need to do is run the kubectl edit PVC command and specify the relevant PVC. Then go to the storage parameter, change it and save the file. In the background, you can see the immediate change at the storage array level. It takes a few seconds for the PV to get updated as well. The next feature is Volume Snapshots. Volume Snapshots feature in Kubernetes has moved to beta in Kubernetes version 117. This was an alpha feature in earlier releases. This feature allows you to create multiple copies of your persistent volumes whether the use case is backup and protection or additional copies for test and dev clusters. Snapshots are the local data protection solution within Parstore system. They provide a method of recovery of data that has been corrupted or accidentally deleted. Snapshots are pointer-based objects that provide a point-in-time copies of the data. Similar to the storage class, in Kubernetes we have an object called Volume Snapshot class. I created a snapshot YAML file called snap1 and set the source of the volume to be the PVC I created in the previous demo. I'm creating the snapshot using the kubectl command 
and within a few seconds, the snapshot is ready to use. If I navigate to the Parser UI, select the volume, and click on the Protection tab, we can see that a new snapshot has been created from our existing volume. At this stage, we can create multiple copies of this snapshot and connect them to additional pods. In this YAML file, I set the PVC data source to be the snapshots I've just created and the size to be the size as the original PVC. By running it using the kubectl command, we can see that a new read-write volume has been created from this snapshot. And we can map this volume to new or existing Kubernetes pods. The third feature is raw block devices. The Parser driver version 1.1 adds support for raw block devices, which are created using the volume device list in the pod template spec with each entry accessing a volume claim template specifying a volume mode equals block. Raw block volumes are presented as a block device to the pod by using a bind mount to a block device in the node's file system. There are some specialized applications that require direct access to a block device because, for example, the file system layer introduces unneeded overhead. The most common use case is databases, which prefer to organize their data directly on the underlying storage. In this example, I'm creating a new PVC called block PVC. The volume type is set to block. In addition, I'm about to create a new pod. The raw block device will be mapped as slash dev slash xvda once the pod is up and running. I'm creating it using the kubectl create command and waiting for the pod to start. By navigating to the OpenShift UI and selecting the new pod I've just created, we can open a terminal to the pod and verify that the new device is mapped to the pod as a new raw device. I hope you'll find this demo useful and thank you very much for watching.